<coughs> Morning. 39th week, I'm excited. <coughs> We're going to be talking about the New Jerusalem. <coughs> In this area on our chart here, the third part, there's seven Hopefully it will maybe finish by September, in September sometime. It'll be close to a year before since we started this. This morning I got up. I enjoyed the rain in my house. Just the smell of it. <coughs> Normally I can sit on our front porch and hear the river. But it's been very quiet. And that river is really, really low right now, and it's very dry. <clears throat> We've been living there for about six years now. It's probably the lowest I've seen in a long time. You have to point a little before I pray, but if you watch the news, I'm not going to name a specific station, but a Christian, uh, Christian news. If you were watching it, you know the river called uh, the Euphrates River. It's uh, in the Middle East. It's called the Euphrates River. And what's going on with that river? Anybody know? Bob, uh, yeah, my daughter mentioned something about that river. In a, in a Christian class, and how it's dropping. The Bible it has a, a prophecy, a message in it. I don't want to scare people, but encourage you to know Christ, that's all. The, in the Bible, it talks about when the Euphrates becomes dry, It's a symbol of the end times. So we keep careful not to set a date or anything like that. We just don't do that. We don't want to do that. But remember, we see the different symbols. Remember, as a woman is, in, is pregnant, we know that when she has labor, it's soon to be born. And just as we see these symbols, it's a, a symbol of Christ will be coming. The Euphrates. Again, it's to get our, our lives, our minds, our hearts right with him before the rapture occurs. Let's pray to start. This morning, Father, I have a lot to be thankful for. Last week, for example, after this class, two young men came and we were talking with them and accepted Christ. Last week, and I'm excited to pray for both of those men. They'll face things in their life. You're coming here to church or someone else going to another church or whatever, but I pray for them. They will continue to walk close to you. The devil's seen these two young men and wants to snatch them back. Pray for all your people here, that their hearts will be prepared and ready to whatever they face and hold on to you and never give up. Pray for all these people. The message today, teaching, service, the worship, and everything. We give it all up to you in your precious name. Amen. To me, 37, 38 weeks, wherever it's been, to have those two accept Christ, 
to me is the best. <clears throat> they left this building on fire. One was a previous student of mine, the other an OSD student. When he was young, he would look up to me and see me with my long hair and ponytail and whatever. And it's interesting how they look up to you when you're young, but I thank the Lord for the opportunity. New Jerusalem. As Eugene mentioned last week, and reminded us, <clears throat> you know, we've talked about Christ coming and all that, but understand when it's done and over, everything is going to be made new. It's a hard concept for our flesh to grasp. But if we put it out there again, everything will be made, be made new. <clears throat> One of the seven, seven ages we look back through here, like, this period of tribulation, the seven bowls, and one of those angels says one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven plagues. You don't know which one, but remember they are each given a different vial, different seven different angels. And they spoke with me saying to John, come here, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Remember I used an example last year, my wife and I were celebrating 40 years. When I first saw my wife come down in her wedding gown and stuff, and it was just set into my mind that moment. So the picture is here. The bride refers to New Jerusalem coming down. The bride's wife being the church. The lamb's wife being the church. <clears throat> and the angel carried John away in the spirit. To a great high mountain. So he could see everything that was going on and showed him the great city. New heaven and a new earth. The holy Jerusalem. Important information. Jerusalem is a nation meaning nothing. No, it's important. That area is important. Descending out of heaven. coming down from heaven. As John saw it, <clears throat> hard for words to describe, but it was very beautiful. It'll have more uh, detailed description, measurements, the types of gems and stuff, and that made it up. Descending out of heaven from God. Last week we talked about Jesus saying that he was going to prepare a place for us. And where I am, you will be there also. The only way you can be there also is to know Christ, to be forgiven of your sins. Without that, there's no covering with his blood. Not my words, but his. So it's coming out from heaven. It's going to be so beautiful. Having the glory of God. We study and I teach for many years, in this, even these last 37 weeks, but we've only scratched the surface of what the description of what it's going to look like. I tease my wife. We're going to be just dumbfounded at what we see, just like my wife just loves to see but what we see. Is. And her light 
was like unto a stone, a precious stone. <clears throat> like a jasper stone. So I'm careful, I'm somewhat colorblind. Green, yellows, and reds and stuff. Even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. What you see now, after he comes, it'll be like a crystal. What we have on earth now, really there's not even going to be a comparison. It's beautiful, but what, we have, what he comes is going to be even more beautiful than that. <clears throat> the streets will be paved with gold. <clears throat> Transparent. You'll be able to see through it. The Bible says that. Me and my wife will later will bring out these various precious stones. You even have a little bit of gold there. And you'll see the stones later. Maybe at the last class we'll lay them out for you to see in the description of these. Jasper and... Remember the Bible talks about as clear as crystal. Transparent gold. Not like the gold you and I see today. In the flesh. We can't see through it, right? The Bible says we'll be able to see through it, it'll be transparent. Our, so our concept, our understanding, it's just going to be so much more beautiful. It had a great wall that was high. Twelve gates. We think of a square, <clears throat> the gate. I don't know, maybe the gate will be rectangle, I don't know. But it's important we'll have three gates. The north, three on the south, three on the east, and three on the west. North, south, east, and west. We'll have three gates apiece. And at the gates, if we kind of go around three, six, nine, twelve, Each gate will be guarded by an angel. <clears throat> Each gate will have an angel. And names written, and the names will be written on the gates. The names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So each gate will have a name. Three, 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 and a square walls. We haven't talked about the outside, but we're talking about the inside. Later we'll see more about the outside, so we're talking about the inside. And on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. Three gates on each side. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. We look at my home, for example, with the river. You know, my home has <clears throat> concrete foundation with a crawl space underneath for air circulation. But this foundation is going to be made from different stones of various types, valuable stones in the foundation. It's very elaborate. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the 12 names of the 12 apostles of Christ. So 
So you have the, the walls with the gates names and the foundation with names. And it shows again the historical, the history is important to be a part of Jerusalem. The 12 name of the apostles of Christ, the Lamb. And as the angel talked with John, he had a golden reed. And it was going to be used to measure. It's 1,500 miles on each side, right? Some say 1,200, 1,500, somewhere in there. Someone did the math. Golden reed to measure the city. We're going to keep emphasizing the city. We're not talking about the outlying areas. We're talking about the city of Jerusalem. <clears throat> the golden reed to measure the city and the gates of the city and the wall also. So it's a, a square, it's not a rectangle, and you'll see that in a minute. <clears throat> in fact, that's right here. And in the city is a square. It's set up in a square. And the length is the same as the breadth. The length and the height are measured the same. So we measure 1,500 from end to end. We're also talking 1,500 to the top. Now I'm standing here. I'm a little higher than you guys here. I'm maybe a half a story high. Can you imagine how high this is? The concept, it's going to be big. Christ said he's going to prepare a place for us, and this is what he's been doing. I remodeled my home this, this week and chose someone that was really good at doing some woodwork and <clears throat> was doing some work on my porch and stuff, and I choose another deaf guy, Larry, to come and help <coughs> make improvements, but what I do it to it is nothing compared to what this thing is going to be like. Christ has done everything here. And he measured the city with the reed. 12,000 furlongs, about 1,200 to 1,500 Translated to English, it would be 1,200 miles to 1,500 miles. So my best picture I could imagine here is from here, my brother lives in Lake something in Arizona. So Washington here, all the way down to there is about one, is about, like for example, the middle of California, LA, and LA over to about Alabama line there, kind of like in our U.S. measurements, so it's large when you kind of overlay it on the U.S. 1,200, 1,500, big square, Jerusalem. And as high as it is, long and wide. So if you could imagine, you know, planes, Eugene said planes maybe travel 32,000 feet, that's only like six miles. 
You know, I've traveled This is going to be really how we're talking 1,500 miles high as opposed to 5 miles high. Our mind can't really just grasp that concept. <clears throat> so as we continue to read, the length and the width and the height of it are equal. It's going to be huge. One thousand five hundred miles in every direction. It's going to be absolutely huge. Don't have words to explain it. <clears throat> Think about the walls on a house. Two by four construction, four by six, or two by six. Think about construction in the houses here, but when we look at the construction in here, measured the wall there of 140 and four cubits. Maybe from about here to that wall over there is how thick it is, 44 cubits. Maybe from here to the kitchen, I'm just trying to estimate. That's pretty thick stone in a foundation. The width of that, or the thickness of that foundation. Rod, you had a comment? Cubits. Right. It's a measure of like kind of an arm length here. We were talking about 144 cubits. And that's according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. The one of the seven, the one of the angels we're talking about here. Beautiful to imagine. <clears throat> and the building of the wall of it was when I think of the framing in my wall, like recently we painted our house and stuff and <clears throat> it was made of jasper and there's gonna be twelve different layers. And one of them being Jasper. The building of the wall, of the wall of it was of Jasper, I'm sorry, not the foundation, but the wall. And the city was like pure gold. That was right, it's going to be a gold that's, if you really know the price of gold, <laughs> Price of gold is like a sixteen hundred bucks a, an ounce. We can't see through gold the type of gold we have, but this is talking about a transparent gold that we can see through. Our concept of gold is not the same as their concept. And the bill, uh, let's see. And the city was a pure gold like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city and now it's going to expand upon each one of them. And New Jerusalem is our reward if we continue to be faithful We will face difficult times in our life. We will face death, death, grieving. But remember last week the Bible says, if we hold 
and there's the key. I'm excited to read this over and over. And it reminds us that we must not give up. Satan is working overtime in the world, especially in our deaf community. He is trying to capture many deaf souls and bring them to hell with him. We need to get busy and win deaf souls to him. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished. And the first foundation was Jasper. The second, Sapphire, which is a red stone. Some say blue, I think it's blue. I remember, I'm colorblind. It's blue. Blue, yeah, it's blue, not red. Okay, thank you, I'm colorblind, so I don't know. <clears throat> I'll believe it when I get to heaven, I'll be able to see the color. <laughs> Trying to explain the color is difficult, so. So sapphire, okay, it's blue. And the third, Chalcedony, Chalcedy, and the fourth being emerald, which is a greenish color. One thousand five hundred miles long, wide, high. And I just throw out just the tiniest gemstone and compare to imagine what these foundations would be like. They're going to be pure. There's going to be no impurities on the inside. No cracks, no impurities, no spots. But they'll be pure. The fifth, Sardonyx. And I encourage you to, on your phone or Google it or whatever, I should have put a picture up of each of one of them. The sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite. Again, I'm careful with the different things. I encourage you to Google to see what they look like. Later, I'll, I'll put some of these out <coughs> and you'll get an idea what they look like on earth. But from heaven, probably different. Uh, the eighth barrel, the ninth topaz. Which, which I know is a light blue, it's my birthstone. Topaz, greenish bluish. And the tenth is Chrysophorus, the eleventh Jacinth, and the twelfth Amethyst. I think one's a purple and one's a yellow and different colors. It's gonna be very beautiful talk about it now but when we see it it'll be just so beautiful we have eternity just to be in awe and look at these things two fellowship we don't, we don't hurry just like now we have duties and responsibilities and there's hurry and guilt and got to get here and get there and hurry and do that <clears throat> in heaven we're going to have this time there's not going to be time to worry about Time to commune with the Lord, to eat, to drink, to fellowship, to enjoy. We will be busy serving with Him, but it is just going to be so beautiful. In the Twelve Gates, and they're going to be made of pearls. We think of the pearl and the clamshell, or the oyster, pearl necklace, this white pearl, and we're going to have a whole gate made of 
pearls. Every several gates was made of every several gate was made of one pearl. That's hard to believe. Can you make a gate with one pearl? That's got those kind of measurements. Now I can't imagine the design on and this beautiful gate opening and my flesh just tries to go to visualize things, but made from one pearl? 12 all together, three on each side. <clears throat> Shows me again his power, his beauty. And it's talking about the gates being made of the pearls. Pearl itself, so yeah, it's not part of the wall, it's part of the gate. It's made of pearl, not the wall, the gate. Okay, as we continue to read, in the streets of the city were pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. As Pat was mentioning, we only see through it. As I'm driving on I-5, all the potholes and the bumps, beats up our cars, you know, the pavement, the tar, asphalt. <clears throat> it's been abused by the sun and the environment, but these are gonna be made of pure gold. be able to see through it. We don't have anything to envision that here on earth to go, oh, that's what it's going to look like. Well, the day we see it, we're going to be in awe. <clears throat> and Stan, you were going to say something? I like what Stan said. Are they going to have cars in heaven? I don't think so. That's my opinion. No more cars. I mean, I'm guilty. I'm first to say I love driving. I lost count of how many cars that I've had over the time. I love cars. I believe in heaven. We're going to be so busy flying to where we're going. We won't need cars. They won't even be on our mind. All of my dart and all that stuff will be meaningless in heaven. <clears throat> but that answers your question. We're going to be free to move as we want. And I saw no temple therein. People are upset when they see this, but the temple, remember, will be who? It will be Christ. He will be sitting on a throne. We won't need a church to go to. We will be in church. We will be in heaven. It will be our temple. Christ is going to be there already with us. There's no separation as the civilized of the sea that will be gone. There will be no separation between us and God. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. We always think about the three in one. The Holy Spirit will be here on earth. And he will be in there in heaven with us. The Holy Spirit will begin with us. The three in one will be there. And the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun.
night or the moon at night. When it's clear in nighttime, it gets black, but when the moon is out, I can walk and I can see everything. And my home is beautiful. In town a little bit different because of the lights from the town and the streets and things, and you can't catch it. But in my home in the country, when those lights are off, it's black. And that moon comes into play and you can see, it's beautiful. But there will be no moon to shine in it. For the glory of God lightens it. There will be no need for light. A source of light. He lightens it and the Lamb is that light. <clears throat> A beautiful place, our reward. My time is gone. We will pick up on verse 24 next week as we continue to read about heaven and what it will look like. I think about seven days a week and time and all those things. But infinity is going to be our new word, eternal. Time's not going to matter. Hard concept to visualize, I know that. And tomorrow, you know, I have an interpreting job tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the morning, put on my tie and get to work. Got to be there at nine o'clock. I have to get up early, make sure I'm dressed appropriately and all that stuff. Time, time, time. Here in heaven, I'm not going to have to worry about that. No Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Time is gone. Not like we think about it here on earth. There's a lot of... <coughs> <coughs> a lot of debates about how, what things are going to be like in heaven, but I'll give you a hint. Jesus said one day is uh, as, as a thousand years. Our concept of time and His are so different. So I'm careful not to throw an overwhelm with, with too much. But our time here today and our time in heaven are going to be different. So let's pray. We'll start next week, 21-24, and continue talking about heaven. Only those who are saved in Revelation, like I've said many times before, like those two men who came and accepted Christ last week, Only His, through Christ, can it happen. That's important. New Jerusalem. The New Jerusalem, which will come out, come, yeah, that's the same thing. Okay. All things will be gone. All things will be made new. Not just remodeled be different. So let's pray. Father, again, as we continue to read and understand the concepts, it's hard to understand just the, be the beauty of he what heaven will be. We look forward to that day. No more pain, no more tears, no more birth pangs, but you are just beautiful. And you've been working to prepare a place <coughs> For us that we can't even imagine that you will bring to us I thank you again for this humble opportunity here this morning to teach we thank you for your death on the cross as we consider to know you and your word that saves us, that your blood covers us. We pray that if there's anybody in the room or online that has not yet accepted Christ,
This teaching is important for one reason, that we would accept Christ and be saved. So thank you again this morning, the humble opportunity to share your message, to serve, and to submit to you. In your name we pray, amen.